Hello everybody, I'm Olivia and welcome to Peaks and Journeys. Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where we're going to be reading my most anticipated release of the year, The Graham Effect by Al Kennedy. It's currently Halloween, so I'm currently at my parents' house and they have a really big Barnes and Noble. We went yesterday and I asked them, hey, have you got copies of The Graham Effect for tomorrow? Like, yeah, we do. We have quite a few, so it'll be here in the morning, but we, we think they're pretty much going to sell out. So I'm getting there for as soon as it opens. I'm running in and getting that and Done and Dusted by Lila Sage. And then I will be heading out and reading The Graham Effect all today. That is the plan, at least. I'm off from work. I know it's my mum's birthday, so I'll do some stuff for the uh, for that. But any other free time I have will be spent reading The Graham Effect. I am so excited. This one is the first in the spin-off series, the Campus Diary series of Bri U and the off-campus series in general. Uh, it's following Hannah and Garrett's daughter, Gigi, and she is a hockey player at Briar. And I think it's kind of like, uh, it's definitely a, a college romance, but I'm not sure if it's another hockey player or I can't remember the rest of the tropes, but I'm really excited and I'm looking forward to going into blind. But I'm really hoping it lives up to the rest of the off-campus series and I can't wait to be back at Bryu. Okay, you guys, you are precariously balanced between the chair and the door of this car. So I was able to get this. I'm very excited about having it. I can't wait to read this. It's like my most anticipated release of the year. It's Grumpy Sunshine. Uh, it's a spin-off. It's 500 pages. It's so much bigger than I thought it was. So I'm so excited. It says Gigi Graham has exactly three goals. Qualify for women's national hockey team, win Olympic gold, and set, step out of her most famous father's shadow. So far, so good, except two little things. Fine, a little thing and a big grumpy thing. She needs to improve her game behind the net and she needs help from Luke Ryder. That's all I'm going to read about it. I can't wait to read this. The anticipation. So I will be starting, hopefully reading the whole thing today. I don't know if that's going to happen because it is my mum's birthday, but ideally I want to read the whole thing today. Then I picked up two other books. Not my finest move, but I did. So... I grabbed Done and Dusted by Lila Sage. I couldn't find this yesterday at Barnes & Noble. Found it right as we were leaving after we checked out. So couldn't, couldn't pick it up then. But this is an indie, originally cowboy romance. One of my friends on Instagram, Candice, loves this book. Is actually the PR for the author. And oh my goodness, it's amazing. It's small town, brother's best friend romance. And I'm so excited. So... I don't want to know much more than that. It's a very short book. It's very small, but it's very, very floppy, which makes me happy. Uh, it is, yeah, 400, 346 pages. So not a huge book, but I love like the style of the cover too. I know there's a sequel coming out soon as well. It's a Rubber Blue Ranch series. So I'm very excited for that. And then lastly, I finally caved and picked up The Ritual by Chantal Tessier. This is a dark college romance. That's all I know about it. I'm pretty sure this is book one. I'm hoping it's book one. But it was too good for Halloween not to pick up. So hopefully I will enjoy it. I'm hoping I can read this soon. The Sin is the next book. Yeah, Sinner and the Sacrifice and then Carnage comes out soon. But I really wanted to get this and read it. Plus I love the feel. It's like that velvety paperback feel. So picked this one up as well. It felt fitting because it's Halloween. But there you go. That's a quick little haul before we start reading The Graham Effect. I will check in with you when I'm like 100 pages in. <laughs> I'm 10 pages in. I'm obsessed. I love Gigi already, but there's also a really cool mixed media element in here where Jack, where Jake Connolly and Garrett are both doing like these interview podcasts sort of a thing. So cool. I'm so excited. I'm loving it. 
I'm so happy. Hi guys, so it's now like 12 30 ish on Halloween. My parents have gone out to like a lake and antique shopping and stuff, and I came back to chill with Blooster down here. And I have been reading The Graham Effect. I am 111 pages into this one. So only about a fifth of the way through, I've got a huge chunk left. I don't know if I'll fully read all of this today, but I do want to read a good chunk of it. Um, I'm enjoying it. It's an interesting setup, and I feel like the way Al Kennedy has moved forward with this series and Bri U as a setting is needed to differentiate it from uh the previous the previous series that she's done. However, it does kind of take away some of the fact that it was Bri U. This is now seeing a merger between Briar's old rivals, Eastwood, and Briar as a school now because Eastwood went under, which again is fine. But when you've built them up to be such rivals, it's kind of weird seeing them combined. And you've got two hockey teams that are combining into one. There's a lot of rivalry. And Ryder, our male main character in this, is a one of the leaders of the Eastwood team that's transferring into Briar. So Coach Jensen is still there, which makes me so happy. But he is now the head coach of Briar still, and he is now taking two rosters of guys, combining it down to one, and then everyone else he has to help find transfers for, or you know they're going not to play hockey anymore. It's very strange. I do like Gigi as a character. There are moments of Hannah, and you haven't seen Hannah directly in this, but there are moments of Yara in here. I wish we'd seen Hannah a little bit so far, but it's okay. Um, Gigi is very much like Garrett in her like crassness and how direct she is in what she wants to do with her game and all of that and I'm loving it. I do like the relationship between Gigi and Ryder so far. I do think that's interesting. Um, I'm hoping Garrett kind of like opens his eyes soon. I feel like as he's gotten older, he's gotten a little bit more stupid and just isn't aware of the context that he's in as much. So I think you can definitely see that some of the fame has gotten to him. And I'm hoping that he kind of gets brought back down to his roots and who he was at Briar and everything. So, anyways, I'm really looking forward to this. I don't like how Garrett is just immediately passing judgment as well because he was never like that in his book. So I almost want the context of like what's happened to Garrett to make him like pass such bad judgment on everyone else, especially Ryder. He's getting a really tough time of it, and it just didn't doesn't quite make sense to me. But I am enjoying it. It's definitely feeling like a four star. It's definitely made me laugh and giggle. It's got the classic Al Kennedy lovable writing in here. The way she's built everything up with the hockey context and stuff, top tier. So excited to continue. But just, I'm really looking forward to going on with this. And I will check in with you probably now when I'm about halfway, which if this is 500 and, yeah, it's 502 pages, like 251-ish. Hopefully I will check in with you then and let you know more thoughts. Hi guys, so it's now 10 o'clock on Wednesday night. My like days off of work are now over, sadly. I go back tomorrow. So I wanted to read more of this today, but I've read a lot of pages today and done a couple other productive things. I am now 368 pages into the Graham Effect. I'm loving it. Oh, I'm eating this up. So I think it takes this book takes a lot of building, right? Because Briar Yu has changed over 20 years, 20, 30 years, somewhere in there. Uh, the characters have obviously grown up. And then Al also has to establish very different characters. You don't feel like you're reading the same story again. While also maintaining those mixed aspects of like Hannah and Garrett's relationship have to be fed into their kids because they're going to have similar personalities. I think that's done really well. You know, Hannah's sassiness is very much mirrored in Gigi. And then Garrett's like drive is heavy in this. So it's really fun seeing that. She's definitely done the tortured past things really well in here. The grumpy sunshine element is brilliant. The passion in here is fantastic for both hockey, for what they want to achieve. I'm in love. I love the relationships. I love the camaraderie that's coming out of this. And the you're starting to get back to that true like close-knit family feeling the further you get in this. And I think that's really heartwarming to see after seeing so much discourse around Briar U. It's it's great to have that like true off campus series feeling to it. I know this is the off campus diaries, it's a spin-off, whatever. But if it's really a spin-off, you want to hold some some of those similar traits that everyone loved from the setting in the first two series in this one. 
and that's starting to come back again. So I am very, very nervous for the third act breakup piece. I feel like I'm getting very close to that now. And I'm honestly hoping it's in these next couple of chapters so that the ending is all just like resolution and everything. Also, uh, Logan and Dean made an appearance in this, which cracked me up. I loved seeing them and their stories and remembering little details from uh, the mistakes and the score that are fed into this. The one thing I will say is there is a lot of entitlement around some of the kids and like them all being super successful and super famous. And I almost hope in the future installments that that goes away and that we kind of see them own up their own stories because I feel like a lot of this is going to focus on how famous their parents were and I don't necessarily want that like I love that the the off-campus originals were all going on to success but I hope their kids hold that same humble trait same humble trait that they originally had because I think that's what drew so many people to this story so overall I think it's gonna be a full star for me uh, just with all of the setup in the beginning, it was a little bit slow. It took me like 150, 200 pages to really get into it. But now I'm into it. I think I'm loving it. This is definitely Elle Kennedy's attempt to write, write those chunkier romance books that people are loving nowadays. And I'm not mad at that at all. I think she's just got to get used to that pacing and that speed that needs to be in there to really keep a romance reader hooked for so long. And I just I hope everything works out in here I'm hoping that it's not all miscommunication because the implications of what's happening or what has just happened in these last 150 like the last third of this book that I've just read I hope that that gets resolved in a different way than what the typical way would be to handle it with miscommunication and arguments and fighting and like if that's the route it goes okay it was predictable and that's your typical traditionally published romance expectations but this is bloom i think bloom are very good about handling any form of conflict resolution in this and i'm hoping it goes that way i do i do think jensen while true to his character has gone a little bit harsher in the way of how he approaches player relationships and that is frustrating i think he was always open to his players being happy and I don't necessarily love how he's approaching Ryder. I think Ryder is very wrong in this book, just because he's from a different college, but it's not that he's not making the effort, and I really wish that his, he got a lot more recognition. But overall, enjoying it, feel very passionately about a few things in here, but it's the same L. Kennedy that I'm really loving. So I am going to finish a little bit more of this in bed, probably, and then I will film my reactions to the last, like, 50 pages tomorrow morning when I read this. But I, just, I don't want to put it down. Ideally, I want to finish this tonight, but I can't. I need to be in bed early because I have to get up early to start work tomorrow. So hopefully I'll finish this tomorrow. But yeah, I am so happy that Elle Kennedy listened to readers and it is giving us another look at the bright you world. I think she'll always be known for that. But I think what this proves is that she can really go back to some of her old settings and, you know, she proved that she can still write the same story and bring something fresh to the genre. So. The, the second one got announced as well, the Dixon something, I want to say. I think it's like the Dixon Chase or something like that. I want, I'm, I'm really curious to know who that is, but this, I'm so glad she's done it. All right, I will come back with some final thoughts, and like, I doubt I'm going to have too much more to say depending on what happens in the rest of this, but that is very much for now. guys so you've all seen i finished the graham effect by l kennedy this was phenomenal i gave it five stars in the end i was really surprised by how much i was connected to this book and how much i loved it by the end of it it was just so good i think the last two thirds there was a lot of setup going on but the way the setup was done and then reading through the end of the book and everything it makes a lot more sense the dynamic makes sense i love where l kennedy went with this it had a lot of the the core elements of the off-campus books where you have the really difficult situations that she tackles and then the chemistry between the two it was so unpredictable I had no idea what was coming next I thought I knew what was going to happen completely changed just brilliant I loved it I love Gigi as a character she was a perfect mix of Garrett and of 
Hannah and I think the the way that she created the next generation series was 10 out of 10 I can't wait to read the next one I am nervous about who the couple is I don't love who it's already about um so I know the female main character I don't really love that it's going to be about her but oh well you know I'd rather just have all of the off-campus kids have their own books but it's what it is so overall happy to have read it five stars can't wait for the next one to come out again full chocolate al kennedy will do it absolute justice so i hope you have enjoyed let me know if you're planning on picking up the graham effect did you enjoy the off campus series as always if you want to see like a mood board for this and all of my full thoughts definitely check out the rest of my social medias linked down in the description box below but with that i will let you get back to the rest of your day thank you so much for watching and i will see you soon on another bookish adventure bye Thank you.